another Wednesday with Crafting Cousins. When life gives you lemons, make something sweet. Let's craft, y'all. Let's get crafting, y'all. It's another Wednesday. The first thing I'm going to do is take some tongue depressors out, popsicle sticks, whatever you would like to call them. These came from the Dollar Tree, and we're going to use less than one pack. So the first part of this project will have a little glue and less than one pack. The first thing I did with these popsicle sticks, you can probably tell they're a little shiny. That's because I put them in some water and soaked them for a good 12 hours so they would be more pliable. What we're going to do is create a basket weave effect. It's a little tricky at first because you just got to hold a lot of things in your hand at once. So we've kind of got them every other one. And I'm going to take three more and put into this project. Bear with me because it's going to be really cute and very farmhouse looking. The next thing we have to do is weave it the opposite way. Like I said, it's a little tricky. If you kind of keep it towards the top, it does help. Got to get behind that one. So let's slide this one down. I'm only going to put four. I put five in to start my weave. And then I'm going to put four actually into this pattern. There we go. If I let go, it will probably shoot across the room, honestly. When we get this one in, oh, got a broken one. That happens, even with soaking them. And this is real life, folks. I practiced this, of course, and did it ahead of time. It, it went a lot better then. Doesn't it always, though? Okay. Let's get this fourth one in here. Make sure I've got it put together pretty well. Now, it is kind of hard to push it when they're wet like this, but that is the only way to put them in there without breaking them. I almost put that broken one back in. So we're going to get this last one in here and then line them up as best we can. The good news is once they dry, they are actually easier then to slide back and forth. But the only way you can weave them is if you get them wet first. So we'll make a nice little square and a basket weave. By the time we finish, this is going to be a cute farmhouse project. Once you get them in a nice square, then you want to manipulate it a little bit. Try and turn it into more of a diamond shape. That will be more important later on. And once you get it to that stage, you want to make four more, laying them on top of each other each time to get as close representation of the same shape as possible. Then take them, put them on a cooling rack, a baking rack, something. You want to leave them out flat and let them dry at least 12 hours. If you don't put them on a cooling rack, they may not get fully dry on top and bottom. And also they could mildew a little bit. So it's good to put them on a drying rack and let them dry out for the night. Now let's move on to the next part of this project. Now I have all of my pieces laid out. And now you can see it's taking the shape of a star. Is it perfect? No, it's not going to be because of the materials that I'm using. But it kind of gives a, that cute basket weave effect that reminded me of the tobacco baskets that are so popular right now. The next thing I'm going to do is take some hot glue and I'm going to go in and place some more tongue depressors in between each place and kind of manipulate them together. And also then I will turn it on the back and do the same thing. And just to let you know, I do have a little bit of glue on the back of these to keep them from sliding. Because like I said, once they dry out, they actually slide around a lot better. And you can manipulate them easily. It's just you can't weave them unless they're wet. Or at least I could not weave them that way. So the next thing I'm going to do is start putting these together. I'm going to have to pull it apart a little bit and show you what I'm doing. And then I'll probably go off camera and finish it because I don't think you want to sit here and watch me glue. 
I'm going to use a very generous amount. I have a better glue gun, guys, but of course you can't find it today. So I'm going to be using this little pink one. I'm not going to put the glue on the back, those two together yet. I'm going to give it some time to go together. And they're not going to be exactly straight. You're going to have to leave a little bit of a gap in there. Let's put the next one in. If you don't put too much gap, um, excuse me, glue on the back, you can always manipulate that situation too. All right, so I'm going to finish this up and I'll be right back. This is what it looks like once I manipulated it and put it together. It took a little trial and error. Um, didn't want to hold you for all of that, but it wasn't terribly hard. It was just a little tedious. I have cross pieces here where they connect on the back. Now, let me show you. I'm going to warn you it's not real pretty, but this is the back. You can see some glue. I even added cross pieces here because I just wanted it to be a little more sturdy than it was. So, that's what the back looks like. And to give you some scale, this star is about 18 inches in diameter. So it's a nice size wall piece and it's going to make a cute 4th of July decor. The next thing I'm going to do is take it outside and use some of my leftover spray paint. I just think that will be easier than sitting down and painting it with a brush. And then we'll add some items to decorate it. I have this five loop simple bow that I tied and I might use that on the project. And I have some florals. Who knows? But let me go outside and paint that, and then we'll move on to the next step. So there's our star. It has a nice coat of spray paint, which turned it a nice shiny white. I didn't put it on real thick because I wanted it more of a whitewash effect, and I just love the results and how it turned out. I'm going to decorate it a little bit. But I want everything to be able to be easily removed because I'm going to use it again at Christmas and I'll just change out the bows and the decor. I have, of course, the bow I showed you. I'm just going to put it through a couple of the holes here. Like so. Let me turn it over and twist it in. And then I can manipulate it from the front. Every bow needs a little fluffing once you get it together. And that's better. I think I will stick some florals in. I've left them kind of long for right now because I want to kind of go in, see how they're going to work, and twist them in the back. Sorry if I'm off camera. So there's one. I like that. Let's see if we can get this one in close. And put it in between these loops. I think that'll work. I'm just twisting them around the back a little bit. I'm going to come back with a chenille stem, wire them in, and then I'll cut off some of this. When I hang it on the wall, I'm not going to worry too much because it has nice holes right. I can just put a tiny nail there. It shouldn't be so bad. A lot easier to manipulate this once I pick it up and take it off camera. And there's our third rows. And I'll just tie it in with these. I'll just kind of wire them down. Because I do want everything to be able to come off very easily. But I do want to trim this up some. I've just got my jewelry cutters. I have some larger ones, but I think they're in the garage because sometimes I film out there. All right, I'll cut this off later. So if we fluff the bow and I think I like that. I think that's going to be very cute. At the end, I'll try to get a picture of it where it's hanging up so you can see it better. But I'm really pleased with how that turned out. I have one more just really quick project for you. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you're new here, we hope you will subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe below. 
Make sure you ring the bell when it comes up and YouTube will let you know every time we upload new content. We upload videos five days per week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you will find something you like here at Crafting Cousins. So remember a few weeks ago, I made a hat and I used some old blue jeans to cover it with? Well, I have another idea for using these blue jeans for another project. I also am going to be using some of this ribbon that came from Hobby Lobby, decorative trim. It says peachy, but guys, this is not a peach color at all. It is an off-white and it has some roses on it. They're fabric roses. I really love these. And I think we'll use a little bling on them maybe and dress them up. I don't know. But I got an idea. I'm going to just use my scissors and I'm going to cut it off right before the first belt loop on both sides. For now, I'm just making a rough cut. And I have this one already cut. And what I'm going to do is go to my sewing machine and put a, a seam there. I have a heavy duty one. If you don't, you can always use glue. But I think I'm going to turn this into a bracelet. Just going to cut real close to the edge. And then we'll get our seam in. And we'll decorate it and cover the seam with some of these fabric roses. So let me head to the sewing machine and I'll be right back. So I have my blue jeans sewn back together, just a little seam there. And when you fasten it back, then that's gonna make a cute bracelet. And then to cover up the seam, well, I took one of those roses I showed you that I got on that roll at Hobby Lobby. And I put the little stone in the middle and now I'm going to just use a little glue and we'll cover up our seam. Just like that. And put it on my arm. And you could sew it. You could um, take some needle and thread and just sew that on. I think that's cute quite fashionable and you could always add different colors to it different textures I just wanted the off-white shabby chic look I think that's cute and there we have it guys I can't believe how great this turned out I just love the way it looks and I still only have about three dollars in this entire project Thank you so much for watching. If you saw something you liked, I hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and any suggestions you might have for us. We would like for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Tutorial Tuesdays, either a Hump Day Hauls or a Wednesdays, Trash to Treasure Thursday, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. See you tomorrow!